I'm ranking all the wishable 4 star weapons based on how excited a noob would be. I'm fairly sure it's a common practice for any tryhard Genshin fan to rope in their unsuspecting friends to suffer with them, but the one thing you as an experienced veteran may not know is just how unknowledgeable your friends can be at times. Yo, I just got this thing called the wishing system. What should I do? Yeah, so you click on the star icon on the top bottom. Oh my gosh! I just got a purple thing! Whoa! Uh, the bell! Should I use it? Ew, don't. Hey. Let them cook. The tier list will rate the weapons based on how awesome they look, how great they work with the really starter characters, and most of all, how much dopamine we can wring out of their uncultured brains. Elemental Mastery? What's that? I only know attack, attack, and attack. Before we begin, here are a few of you viewers that I want to shout out. If you want to have the chance of being up here, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be sure not to do repeats. Now let's get started. Beginning our tier list off with swords. Luckily, there are two prime candidates to equip these weapons. The Flute, a classic. You know, this is one of the first 4-star weapons I myself got, and I made sure to use it liberally. See, the Traveler and Kai are most likely the stars of your early playthroughs. Yes, Lisa may have that... aura about her, but nothing feels better than getting right up close and... The flute does this magnificently. It looks pretty, being a musical instrument and all. Its substat is attack, which a noob would probably want lots of, and the passive is pretty easy to get around. When you hit someone five times, a shockwave gets released. The little notes also helps get the point across. Plus, the damage is quite impressive. Remember, your character talents would most likely still be at one, and Gaia doesn't even break 100 physical damage until level three. And also remember, a noob would want to level up their normal attack. I certainly did. A tier. We're starting off strong. So let's move on to... Lion's Roar. One that I honestly don't remember much of. Nonetheless, its sleek design and attack subset makes it on par with the flute so far. The only thing that may be off-putting is the passive. It's not the only 4-star to deal extra damage against enemies imbued by certain elements, and I'd say that Lion's Roars is somewhere in the middle of them. Yes, Pyro and Electro are already accessible to us, plus we do find elemental slimes here and there, but it just so happens that our only sword users don't really wield those. A noob wouldn't think too hard about rotations or creating reactions, so they're most likely going to normal attack and sometimes elemental skill until the guy is dead. So, not being able to apply the same element you deal extra damage to is a bit unfortunate. Still, if you do play well with Amber and Lisa, you could make it work. I'd give it a B though, if only we had a Bennett as a guarantee. Fav Sword is next. Wait, aren't there more? Oh yeah, all five weapons have a fab variant. Oh, well, let's just compile them all into one section, because they all essentially do the same thing. They give energy. Easy as that. Yes, I would definitely want to see arrows rain from the sky or summon a huge tornado more often, but energy recharge? Really? Plus, the passive is basically non-existent, because seriously, when are you going to deal crits when you've got barely any Bruh. artifacts? I mean, you'd probably still equip this on a monster characters because... Ooh, they're from the Favonius. The weapons go with them aesth aesthetically. But as great in meta fab weapons usually are, are, I will have to put them in B tier. With a heavy heart, mind you. Maybe once you set foot into artifact domains and really make Genshin your 9 to 5, that'll be more important. Although, on the other hand, we do have the Sack series, and let me just say that these two series are not built the same. Yes, the core essences get energy faster to unleash more bursts, but the way they go about it is what sets them apart. With the Fav series, these white balls just spawn from your character, but with the Sack series, Ooh, here's where it gets fun. Every time you hit someone with an elemental skill, you get a chance to use it again. It's really fun with the Traveler, but Amber, Kaya, and Lisa can still benefit from them too. I mean, there's no polearm, but seriously, what early four star is important enough to need this? Plus, it's shiny, light, and even favors attack over energy recharge. For this, I give it an A. You've earned your spot there. All right, we're all done with swords, so it's on to... Polearms! Oh, it's you. Forget what I said before, please. Dragon's Bane, a mighty fine choice. Already having a name like Dragon's Bane instantly puts it high on the tier list, but it's held back by a couple of things. For one, its subset is EM, kind of a setback, but later in the game it has its uses. For two, it has that niche passive again. The good thing about this one is that Xiangling exists, meaning you do have someone who's dealing pyro. Plus, if the cogs in your brain clink up enough, the vaporize reaction could do some amazing damage, but Xiangling herself is the third setback. Who else can use it? She may be infamous for wielding every polearm, but she is even more infamous for being the only one to use them. As of 1.0, that is. It's like saying you're the best in the field when you're literally the only one there. Yes, you do get Kachina, but that's really, really late. I don't even know if I should consider her, really. In all honesty, the Dragon's Bane is a great weapon held back by its sheer unusability. B tier. Higher than Lion's Roar, though. So maybe like an upper B tier or something? Do we have that? Anyway, what other pull arms are there? That's it? Wow. There aren't even that many pole arms to go with Xiangling. Well, let's get it on to Claymores. Yes, there's only one character who uses this too, but at least the game literally shoves her right in your face the first chance it gets. Rain Slasher. Oh boy. 
Remember when I said that the lion's roar was in the middle and the dragon's beam was slightly higher? <laughs> this one's down in the dirt. I'm sorry, Noel, but just because this thing's a four star doesn't mean you should use it. You have no use for the Boy. EM. You're not dealing any hydro Boy. or electro damage anytime soon. And the people who do aren't going to be applying their Boy. element much. It doesn't even look the most appealing. Green with Noel's brown? Hard pass. I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to go down to C. Not lower, we couldn't afford a DRF. The bell. Oh, people aren't gonna like me for this one. Before I say anything, just note that I despise the bell just as much as you all do. There's like no Claymore users that scales off of HP. And if you really wanted the extra damage boost, go for one that doesn't have HP's percent as a substat. But hear me out. If you put this thing on Noel, you can get, wait for it, two shields. I think that's pretty fire. Plus, what does Noelle always have around her? A shield! And guess how you get that damage bonus? By having a shield. Why am I talking to you guys like this? I'm sorry. Sure, she doesn't scale on HP, but it still looks pretty wacky with that huge clock in the center. I'd probably use this as a meme weapon because, seriously, when's the last time you've beaten someone up with a watch? A tier. Straight up there. Bows. Totally underutilized by putting on only Amber and Kale, but don't worry about the characters, just worry about the bows. Rust. A tier. Do I need to say more? There's finally a use for Amber, and you don't need to get up close to your enemies anymore. It looks super cool, like those gothic edgy kids in middle school. The strong attack substat along with the juicy 40% normal attack boost really gets your adrenaline going. Then you spam that left click without getting carpal tunnel. Plus, the name itself instills fear, like rust. Isn't that just amazing? Who's going to fear silver shower heartstrings when you've got an absolute beast with the rust? Need I say more? An instant A tier. The only thing holding it back is probably Amber. Sorry, girl, but it's the truth. The stringless, an amazing option as well. Wow, the bows are killing it. Sure, Baron Bunny may not be as reliable as Genshin makes it out to be, but definitely a stronger arrow rain is cool. Plus, the stringless looks really majestic, like it's a direct opposite of the rest. The EM substat is a bit unfavorable, so it gets a solid B tier. Hey, at least this meta weapon isn't getting that bad of a rep. But speaking of meta, we have one more weapon type, and judging from the thumbnail I made, I gotta explain myself. Catalysts. Get ready, Lisa. Get ready, Barbara. We're going in. The Witsif. I gotta say it's an A. I'm not a monster who put it down in C tier, but it sure wasn't going to the top. But gamer person, why? It's such a good weapon. Yeah, I totally agree. But just because it's good in a veteran's eyes doesn't mean it's the best in a noob's. Yes, there are plenty of huge numbers here. I'm not denying that these are good. It's just, this is a weapon made for later. You already know we're barely critting, so the substat doesn't do much. How you use the weapon is also a bit questionable. When you switch in, you do see these notes, but it's only for a split second. What does that mean? I certainly took a while to figure it out, even the buffs are in literal numerical order. And if it took the great mind of one toad to miss this, just imagine who else did. Plus, you'd probably only be going for the attack and damage buff bonuses anyway. Once again, EM is just too complicated for a noob to worry about. Having a 67% chance to get a good buff on top of not knowing what buff you get, it kind of stops it from being number one. But what is? You already know the answer. It's the last four star we need to discuss anyway, and I'm fairly sure you have a lot of questions. The Eye of Perception. Where do I even start with the allegations? It's an amazing weapon, okay? It has a good attack and an attack substat. It looks particularly mysterious. Finally, something that isn't just another book. But the biggest thing is obviously the passive. A 50% chance to deal 240% attack. And the best thing, it's fully physical damage. If you ever wanted a better meme weapon, you can't go better than the Eye of Perception. Just imagine soloing a Hydro Slime with your Barbara just because you can put this on her. Imagine Lisa against an Electro Abyss Mage. Imagine... Wait, no, that's all the Catalyst people. Hey, it's also balances between enemies, which as of right now, is one of the easiest ways to get huge physical AoE damage. What, you still don't believe me? Fine, here. Look at that, a level 40 Eye of Perception. A low enough level to carry me through the early game and a high enough level so that I can say it's not faked, which it isn't. I am dying on this hill and saying that the Eye of Perception really, truly is an S tier weapon. And that rounds out the list. Thank you for watching till the end. And if you really aren't happy with the placements, I highly suggest you watch this video where I wield the Fav Claymore and defeat the weekly boss Arlequino with only a level one Dia. Until next time, have a good day, night, etc.